for me. Thank you. So at this, as this meeting is virtual and we're not all gathered in the same space, I recognize that this land acknowledgement might not be for the territory that you're currently on. We ask that if that this is the case, you take the responsibility to acknowledge the traditional territory you are on and the current treaty holders um, as a member of the York University community. We recognize that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations. The area known as Takaranto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabeg Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron-Wendat, and the Métis. It is now home to many Indigenous peoples. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, this territory is subject of the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant, an agreement to peacefully share and care for the Great Lakes region. Our agenda for today is the quick welcome by me. My name is Navini. I am the coordinator of mature student success at the Center for Mature and Part-Time Students. We've just went through the land acknowledgement. I will now proceed to speak on the services at the Atkinson Center for Mature and Part-Time Students. We will then get some welcoming remarks and keynote speaker, Brian Poser, who is our Director of Academic Success and Transition Programming. We will hear from two of our mature student uh, peer mentors and work study students at ACMAPS about their experience as mature students at York University, so you'll get to hear their stories. We'll go into um, hearing about the York University Mature Student Organization, which is a club for mature students on campus. Osam is their representative who will speak on their, their club. We'll also talk about our COVID-19 website that York has for students. We'll do a fun little game of Wheel of Names. You'll get to uh, be able to win uh, two gift cards to the York University Bookstore. And then we'll do at the end a connection activity where we'll get you to connect with other mature students in the breakout room and you'll get to meet and hear stories from other mature students and try to build that connection as new students on campus. And then we'll come back to the main room for a thank you and closing remarks. So we'll proceed now. So as I said, my name is Navini. I am the coordinator of mature student success at ACMAPS. I have been in my role at ACMAPS for about 13 years now. Um, here at ACMAPS, we offer mature student success series workshops uh, for our students to build their skills and knowledge. Some of these workshops that we offer are Citations 101, cafe hours where you get to meet other mature students, student parent get togethers, time management, exam prep, to name a few of those workshops. We also have a peer mentoring program at our center. And this program is upper year level students who are third or fourth year level who can, you can book a one-to-one -one appointment with them or do a drop-in. For now it's still one-to-one -one appointment booking via Zoom where you're able to come in and speak with them about anything that you're going through, any questions that you might have about resources, situations with a professor, perhaps you don't know how to navigate um, the situation and how dealing with juggling school, work, family life, how they have done it, they would be able to assist you, give you tips on studying, things like that. We also offer a first year experience program. This program is where you can do online modules 24 seven via eClass, which is a platform that York uses. Um, and it's a free course. These modules were done in collaboration with Learning Skills Services and the Career Education Development at York University. I am now gonna move on to our welcome and keynote speaker, Brian Poser, who's going to speak on tips and tricks on what you need to know to start your year off strong and how to prepare as a mature learner. So I would love to introduce Brian. Brian has been at York University for about 25 years in various roles, or more than 25 years, I should say, in various roles as a learning skills counselor, instructor, manager, and a director. Brian holds a BA from York and a Master of Education degree from Ontario Institute for Studies and Education at the University of Toronto. Brian has worked extensively with students on academic skills, time management, academic writing, learning styles, and personal success. I'm gonna hand it over to Brian to share his screen now. Okay, thank you, Navani. Good morning again, everyone. Just as I'm pulling up the screen, I hope you can just give me a bit of a nod to let me know if you can see what I, I'm aiming to display. Okay. Can you all see that okay? Yeah. Oh, there, perfect, wonderful. Okay, so 
obviously welcome. I'm delighted that you could join us this morning. Navani, thanks for that nice introduction and, uh, and the land acknowledgement. And uh, to our guests, uh, I'm, I'm delighted that you could join us. Um, this morning, we're going to take, as Navani mentioned, kind of part one of getting ready uh, to perform well at York and to, to begin your studies at York. And so uh, a couple of things. Some of what I'm talking about this morning is fairly high level. That is kind of general. Um, but as we move through the subsequent sessions, you're going to get a lot more rich detail and there'll be opportunities for you to uh, interact with us on some of those topics as well. So we want you to sit back and relax. Uh, we can make a copy of the slides available to you at the end if you would prefer. So that's, uh, that's always something we're happy to do. So don't feel like you need to take uh, copious notes, but if you'd like to make notes to stay engaged, that's fine. Um, one thing I'll ask is uh, you may use the chat. Uh, to pop up questions if you have them uh, along the way, and I'll do my best to track those and, and the team will track with us, uh, and I'll do my best to answer all of those for you, okay? So uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. The volume's good. Thumbs up for that just real quick, and we're good to go. Okay, thanks, Sabina. Alrighty, so a couple quick things. Um, first of all, uh, academic programming under COVID-19 is a moving target, folks. Um, <laughs> every day something new comes down. But right now, as of uh, yesterday's uh, sort of news update, uh, we have a full range of courses available at York, and about 30 to 60 percent capacity is planned for on-campus activity. So some classes may be on campus, some may be delivered remotely. You might have selected one of those paths. Uh, you might have chosen to blend those paths. There's no wrong answer there. It's just whatever you're kind of keen on and whatever your program is going to offer. A couple of things I just want to reassure you about, and that is firstly, the return to campus is being planned super carefully and it's guided by public health and government directives at every stage. Uh, and as the government makes new decisions and as the conditions of COVID shift in the province, uh, we are updating those plans. In fact, sometimes there are multiple versions of plans alive at one time and as the new information comes in, we create a new one and discard old ones. And so we're sometimes what you hear uh, as news may change from week to week or in the course of a couple of weeks. So it's a good idea uh, to check back. I've left you a link here and we'll send that out. Uh, the You Better Together uh, website is where the university is tracking all of this information and making it publicly available for you. And so if you have questions about how is your candling all of this stuff, uh, there's a lot of great detail there. Keep in mind, safety is a number one priority. Uh, as an example, a lot of work has been done in air exchange systems and air purification systems on campus uh, and in high traffic zones or typically high traffic zones. Um, the ideas of uh, spacing and even uh, some plastic barriers uh, have been erected so that we can uh, make sure we can serve you in person and safely. But keep in mind, the ECMAPS office will be able to serve you both in person and virtually throughout the fall term. So as you're making that transition in that important period, uh, know that we're available to you and we invite you to reach out. The other thing I'd just like to touch on real quick before I get into the content is, uh, is on Black Lives Matter. And uh, around this time last year, we were in the wake of the George Floyd murder. And uh, by now you will have known the, the outcome of the, the trial around that. York has uh, an anti-Black racism framework and draft action plan that is published. I've left you the link here, and it's uh, worth checking out as well. Uh, generally speaking, uh, there's a lot of activity going on on campus to, uh, to work against anti-Black racism. And so I just wanted to kind of drop that in today to let you know that York is really very in tune with that and is working progressively to good ends. Okay, so now that we're warmed up and you got used to my voice, I'm gonna move into succeeding at university as a mature student. It, uh, as we see through the, the presentation, there are a number of questions I have for you. There's one slide there where I'm gonna ask you to annotate. And so you may see at the top of your screen, um, there's an opportunity for you to click on to, uh, to annotate. And I'll ask my colleagues for some support when we get to that specific place. But today, this presentation is kind of the general high level view of succeeding at university as a mature student. And in the subsequent sessions, we're gonna deal with the more specific details. Uh, and Navani will touch on what those pieces will be as we go along. So first of all, I want you to think about finding your why. That is, what is your primary motivation for attending university? Knowing what this, uh, this motivation is going to be uh, can be a real important, a really important kind of uh, touchstone is a good way to put it. I think it's a good touchstone for you 
when things are going along and it's going wonderfully, you know, you don't really need to touch on that. But sometimes when things are busy or when you're a little overtired or maybe you get, you're experiencing some stress, it's good to remind yourself of what's the, what are the primary drivers for you choosing to come to university now? And here's some of the very common things that we've heard from students in the past. And uh, I'll ask you to just to drop into the chat what you think. Um, how many of you are here for career advancement, for instance? Is that your primary motivation for attending? Uh, in the wake of the 2008 market crisis, uh, we had a large number of students uh, jumping in uh, to university studies for career advancement and career retooling. Are you here for self-fulfillment? Uh, is this just one of those things you've always wanted to do or be able to do, and now life is configured in such a way that permits you time and space to do it? And that's, uh, that's a very strong motivator as well. Some of you may want to be a role model to others. It's not uncommon, in fact, for some of our mature students to actually study alongside their children uh, or their partners or spouses. Uh, and sometimes you're, you're not intending to be a role model to others, but you end up being a role model to others. Others look to you and say, well, if Brian can do it, if Navani can do it, if Osama can do it, you know, then maybe I can do it. And people start to give themselves permission to take on the possibility of coming to university. And there's a final one that's very, very powerful as well. And sometimes we refer to this as the revenge plot. Um, the idea here is just really to prove you can do it. Sometimes we've been told along the way in our lives that we're not university material or that we're not going to make it there or we should choose another path. And people sometimes have discouraged us from pursuing a path of higher education. And so uh, very commonly people come back to university just to prove they can do it. And uh, sometimes some of that is uh, comical, a little vivid. You know, we've had students tell us they're gonna take their graduation diploma and visit the people who told them they couldn't do it and, uh, and show them the diploma. So I'm very curious to know what some of your motivations are and uh, I'm, I'm very keen to, to get a sense. Yeah, so I'm looking here, it's a combination of things, right? There are multiple reasons that are driving you uh, some are all of the above, some are the first couple of them, some want to be role models, it's nice to see that. And maybe there are other things along the way for you as well, right? So um, some of you are really clear on these. And again, these, these motivations may shift from time to time as well. Keep in mind, our mature student um, population at York is fairly substantial. Uh, it's in the range of about 6,000 to 6,500 mature students, which is more than many people think are going to be here. Uh, and for them, the age in, the, the range in age from the 20s all the way into their 80s. And we, so we have a swath of the lifespan here that's quite significant. Anyway, you're gonna to wanna to figure out what your why is and you're gonna to wanna to hold on to that. Some people put it up on a notice board. Some people you know, put it on the cover of their laptop. Some people write it in their notebook. Whatever it is, keep close to your motivation and know what it is that's driving you. Okay, so let's see if I can get to the next slide. There we go, juggling roles. Uh, this is a significant piece of well-being and success at university for mature students. And uh, I'll put it this way. Um, mature students tend to be somewhat more at risk for interruptions to their studies uh, or for the conclusion of their studies prematurely. And so we really want you to highlight this in your mind and do some thinking while it's still summertime, you have a little more prep time. Um, the way that you define and prioritize all of your life roles plays into how smoothly your academic experience goes. Uh, your academic progress may be slowed or interrupted if you find that one or more of these areas of life uh, are in crisis. Uh, and so keeping in mind, these are some of the, the roles people have. They're not all of them. Some of you are parents. Um, you know, I, I'm curious to know how many of you are parents. Some of you have partners or spouses. Uh, some of you are providers to your parents or to elders. Um, some of you are working even as you come to university, whether you're coming part-time to university, maybe you're coming full-time, you might be working part-time or full-time alongside, and so you've got an employer connection there. And of course, you have the new role of being a student or the, the new-to-you role of being a student, new in some time being a student. One thing I want to mention here is that uh, typically when one or more of these things goes sideways in life, we tend to find our student role bumping down the list of priorities somewhere near the bottom. And so I've listed here, notice the student isn't necessarily at the top of the list. At ACMAPS, we understand being a student is one of your priorities, but it isn't always your top priority. You may have other things that you've got to look after and juggle. 
And so that flexibility and your ability to juggle becomes an important kind of uh, mindset and skill set for your success at university. And if you uh, you are thinking with this in mind and you are needing some support around how to juggle these roles successfully, um, come in and talk with us and come in and talk to our peer mentor team and come to our workshops because this juggling act is real. And sometimes what happens is uh, we're left with this kind of muted feeling of, of excitement. You know, we come in and start out super excited and then these things start getting juggled and we don't necessarily feel like we're doing any one of them terrifically. What I want to re, you know, kind of reinforce for you and encourage you about is it doesn't matter if they're all going perfectly. What matters is you put one foot in front of the other and you do your best in all of these zones. Okay, so here's some questions you might want to ask yourself as you make the transition to university. Um, you'll see here I've got a funny meme. Uh, you know, this woman here is correcting her history prof because she remembers being there, whatever that there was. Um, you know, keep in mind, like, uh, we've got to think about some things that impact on our experience of university in a global sense. So here are a few things to be thinking about. You probably have begun to think about these things already, but what do you think might be different about the culture of university and how will you adapt? So some of you are coming from workplaces. Some of you are coming from other uh, educational spaces. Some of you haven't been in a formal educational space in some time and you know, you're coming to university now and you'll be thinking like, how does this place work? And how does York work? And so that's what we refer to as the culture of the university. And we think that's really important to think a bit about and how to identify what the culture is. You know, where, where do mature students sit in the classroom? What is it about asking, can we ask questions in the class? Uh, can we speak to the professor during class or should we wait until after? Can we ask for extensions? These are minute pieces of the culture. Um, you know, what's the, what's the expectation for my classes when I have them booked back to back? I have 11 to one and then one to four. Do I really have, you know, six straight hours with no stop? How am I getting from one class to the next if the time's a butt like that? You know, one thing you can remember is that there's always 10 minutes or supposed to be 10 minutes at the end of one class to give you that travel time as an example of culture. So that's something to be thinking about. The other things you want to think about are listed here too. What role will your prior education and lived experience play in the classroom? So some of you have positive classroom experiences from the past. Some of you might have not so positive ones that you're trying to correct for. But think about your prior education and your prior lived experiences because these are super important to your capacity to make sense of what's going on in the lecture. Uh, you might have lived experience that uh, is different even sometimes than the theoretical knowledge being uh, talked about in the classroom. And that may cause you to see a conflict between what you know already from life and what you're hearing in the class. And how do you reckon with that? How do you wrestle uh, those two appear apparently you know, opposing ideas? So think carefully as you're starting school about uh, what do you know already and how flexibly are you approaching what you're gonna hear in the classroom? I think sometimes we get locked in to say, well, oh, that can't be right because I've lived it differently. Well, one thing to think about is how can the theoretical knowledge be lined up and contrasted nicely with your experience to date? And here's a question I want you to think about. I'm going to invite you to annotate this next slide. And Avani, if you could just jump in real quick and help folks to know what steps to take to annotate their slide, that would be super here. But I'm really curious to have people just think about what challenges do you already think about that you might encounter uh, as school begins? Okay, so now do you wanna just jump in and give people an idea of how they can uh, annotate this page? Yes, so everyone, if you look at the very top of your screen, you'll see a green bar. It says you're viewing Brian Poser's screen. Beside it, you'll see view options. If you click on the little arrow that says view options, the third drop down will say annotate. Click that, and then you'd be able to choose whether you want a text, which is probably text here, and then you could just type in what your answer would be. Okay, so feel free to write down whatever you feel safe sharing, whatever you'd like to share. Um, I'm hoping we can see folks what they've got. Oops, all right. Someone wrote in the chat, Brian, there assignments and meeting the props requirements. Yeah, yeah. So assignments, you know, especially if you haven't been doing writing assignments for some time, that might be a challenge. Um, understanding what the professor's requirements are and making sure that you're 
you're navigating those uh, in a good way, uh, that's important. You know, so yeah, those are those are definitely things to think about. Okay. So getting back into the smooth universe, we're starting to see some things overlap. Let's see if I can move them around just a touch. Goodness, every time I click the screen now, I'm getting uh, getting stuck there. Integrating with school community, yep. You know, you'll be in classrooms with 17 and 18 year olds as well as some other mature students. And so that might feel a little bit uh, different. And just knowing how to interact in that classroom and where to sit and where to be comfortable. Uh, handling the course load for sure. Those are, those are challenges that people face. Uh, and how to do that in a way that balances the rest of life. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, writing assignments that are, you know, not connected to your line of work. So if you're in a uh, class in humanities or something as a breadth requirement for your courses, uh, how does that line up with the rest of your life? Yeah. Okay, and there's, there's a, you can see here, there's a comment about being a good mom at the same time. And we see that happens regularly. We see people concerned about how can I continue the standard of things that I've set in my life and in the expectations with my family, right? So those are those are really common, all right? Some of these are overlapping a little bit. Now, every time I click, I'm getting a little stuck there. See, every time I touch the screen, we're moving screens. So um, we'll see if we can grab a few of those and pull them apart. Um, yeah, it's been another minute or so. Uh, math assignments, yeah, big frown there. Math can be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, we can find some supports on campus for math uh, learning as well. There's an, math learning labs and there's uh, tutorial classes assigned to your, to your lectures and so on that might be part of that. Um, but math can be a bit of a daunting thing. Um, studying, getting a job, that balance, yeah. Yeah, changes to a relationship with partner. You know, your, your time availability, your focus, your, you know, your attentiveness, those things might shift and it'd be important to, to talk a little bit with your partner about what that might be like and, and how can we carve out some intentional time together uh, that that is always preserved so that the partner doesn't feel like they're, you know, kind of set aside or being ignored. Um, that can be a really uh, important piece of that. Uh, commuting. Oh, my goodness, the commute thing. Um, we're, we've all been working remotely for 16 or so months, and we've forgotten that the commute now is 30 minutes, or sorry, 30 seconds from my kitchen to my home office. Um, maybe similarly in your house uh, or your apartment, your, your living space. But commuting could be a big deal. Uh, figuring the timing of that and the, and the process for that, go by schedules, subway schedules, parking, all that stuff. Okay, so thank you for your, uh, your thinking on this. These are really common kinds of concerns. And now could I get your help to, uh, to clear the annotation before I move on to the next, next piece there? Are you able to do that? Let me try. I'll see this is on your screen though, right? So I may not be able to do it. Okay. I can't do it, Brian. Oh, okay. Here we go. A little bit of technology. Yep. There we go. Okay. Somebody did it. <laughs> uh, behind the scenes, if it was one of our team, thank you very much. Here uh, is an example of a word cloud. We, we weren't able to make quite a word cloud today, but um, in this concept of the word cloud, the larger words are the more frequent common concerns. Um, and so different people word things slightly differently, but time is a big thing. Time and finances were, were big factors, the balance, uh, friends, mental health, technology, workload, knowledge base, transit. So it lines up with commuting. These just gives you a, an example. The kinds of things you were telling me a moment ago on the, on the annotation screen is very similar to what we have here uh, from past years. So, you know, these are very common experiences. Um, and one of the things we'll talk a bit about, uh, I think today is making sure you give yourself some room to kind of get it gradually. I think sometimes we put pressure on ourselves to have it all worked out in advance. We think that we can pre-plan and everything will be set and perfect. And we, we want it to go smoothly because we don't want the stress of, of things going sideways. But try please to give yourself a little bit of room uh, to ease into the process and to observe what's happening in the process and to make small corrections along the way to get things to improve and move toward being right and, and perfect rather than thinking you're going to start the year out that way. Okay, so I'm just going to move uh, on to the next slide here. Hopefully we can, uh, we can get a few things going here. Uh, again, I'm not going to be able to give you everything exhaustively today, but I have a couple more points here to share with you that I think are valuable. And the next screen 
that I think will sum up some key ideas for you. And then I'm going to pass it back to Navani, and you can hear from some of our current students, peer mentors, and, and work study students. One thing that we have to remember is you're not starting just now. You, your journey to university has begun some time ago. You've been moving in life around uh, to decide to come to university, to figure out how it's going to fit into your lives. So, you know, you're already actually on a course. You're part of the adventure already. And uh, some of the things that you're going to be encountering now at this time of the year, and you might already have started to work through, is deciding on majors. Maybe when you applied, you were thinking about this, but thinking about final decisions on course load, course format, and course selections. So are you going to be a student who comes to campus? Are you going to be a student who has some courses done virtually? Uh, how many classes will you be thinking about taking? And which courses will you be selecting? Some of those things will be worked out through uh, appointments with your faculty advising center. Uh, but if you'd like to chat with us about advice on course load or those kinds of things that can be uh, arranged. But really, uh, you know, what you want to think about is is taking a course load that you feel like you can manage. It, sometimes people get locked into the idea that it's a four-year degree, and so they think, I've got to do this in four years, and so the math works out to doing five courses per year. It doesn't always have to look like that, and uh, it might be that in our panel you hear a bit about it. Uh, something else, and this idea about the, the, the relationship with a partner or spouse, having, quote-unquote, the conversation with your key supporters, and that can include partners and spouses, it can include family, friends, employers, um, begin to have conversations with them. Uh, sometimes you'll be asked like, what are you doing mid-age, you know, or in the middle of life, just, you know, leaving work maybe and coming to university? What, people say, what are you thinking? And, you know, sometimes those conversations are kind of hostile or they feel a little challenging or they feel like people don't understand. It's really important to have conversations with these key supporters to let them know what your why is, let them know how they can play a role in supporting you, and let them know that you're not always going to know in advance what you need. Sometimes you're only going to figure out what you need in terms of, you know, space and time and energy and support uh, as you're moving through things. And so I think the conversation um, might be the wrong wording because it's not just a single one and done scenario. The conversation might be an ongoing one one that you revisit a number of times throughout the year, but things to think about with your key supporters. Um, there are also uh, some useful things to think about looking ahead uh, to knowing what signposts to watch for and how to respond to them. So, you know, you're not gonna be able to dictate to yourself exactly what's gonna happen coming up. And so you wanna watch for uh, some signals that tell you you're on the right track or some signals that tell you, you know, you, you're starting to encounter some difficulty, or maybe you'll get a signal that says things are not going well, but hopefully not. Um, you know, we're here to help prepare you for uh, things to go smoothly. And really everyone at York, despite it being a massive place, are really interested in you succeeding. So things to watch out for and how to respond. Watch your grades. Um, sometimes you're gonna have standards for grades. There's a real pressure, especially if we've left work to come to university or in middle age coming to university, there may be a pressure to perform, especially knowing you know, we're expending some of our resources, time, money, and so on uh, to come to university. Those people around us might be looking to us you know, to score high grades right from the start. It's important to just recognize that your grades are not necessarily gonna be bad at the beginning. They might be wonderful, but they also might be a kind of a little less than you're hoping for. And that's totally normal. And it's something you can kind of continue to work on. But the grades are one indicator that will give you a bit of feedback on how things are going. And we don't get grades all that often. And so you're, you're going to have to find some other pieces there. Um, talking to your peers in class, uh, getting feedback from the instructor, kind of checking your knowledge against what's being talked about. And you know, does it feel like you understand? Are you understanding the lectures? Do the readings make sense? Those are signposts to watch for. And responding to them really just sort of says, hey, if I'm not feeling good about it, what are my resources? How do I move ahead for this? And uh, how do I make the best of this scenario? Okay, academic deadlines are gonna be helpful as well. Uh, there'll be signposts kind of in the midst of the year, uh, early deadlines for adding courses. There'll be deadlines for dropping courses. There'll be, there'll be grade deadlines by which instructors are supposed to tell you some feedback and so on. Those are also useful for you to pick up some kind of input about how things are going. 
finally, a big message here before I give you the last slide, and that is you want to keep success in perspective. Um, and what that means really is about finding balance and well-being and building a sense of connection. Sometimes, uh, you know, we, we've encountered mature students who really don't uh, explore anything of the campus outside of the one or two classrooms they visit. And we think there, there's a bit of a loss there. You know, it's fine if you come to campus, go to class and leave campus, but uh, that's certainly efficient. But it's, it's not necessarily going to give you the right balance, may not contribute as much to your well-being as having a bit of social time on campus, a bit of meaningful connection on campus, a sense of connection to others on campus. Um, these sound at first like they might take away from your degree and your progress, but in fact, they they accent that and they, they give you a resource that moves you forward, gives you a network of people so you can connect with, who can assist you and point you in good directions. So uh, try to keep that success in perspective. And you know, uh, we'll talk a bit here in the next slide about something called the beginner mindset. Okay, here's um, a few tips. Now, is there a recipe for success? Probably not. Uh, there's nothing we can kind of cook up for you that says guaranteed this is going to be success. However, these are things that you can rely on from the rest of your experience in life. Uh, you'll recognize many of these things as self-evident, like, uh, yeah, I know I have to work hard, for example. But these things are all part of setting yourself up for success. And you'll see the little graphic here. I'm not sure how visible it is to you, but, you know, there's a cycle that comes with the academic life. We, we get confused at first, and then we get more confused, and then we get frustrated, and then we feel hopeless. And then ah, we have the light bulb comes on, and we have an epiphany, and we make sense of things, and things get comprehensible, and we, we move through accomplishment, and then we start this cycle over again. So here are a few things uh, that are part of my own recipe for success. Um, obviously working hard. You, nobody who's a mature student comes in and calls it in. The mature students we've met in our time, many years of working uh, with mature students, are, they're all prepared to work hard. And so we, we grant you that. But definitely hard work is part of it, but smart work is also part of it. And we don't want you just to make it a, a, about applying yourself harder and harder to the work. Um, you want to apply your life experience. It's vital for you to hold your life experience as a means, as a, as a place to stand while you're learning and encountering new information. And often what you hear does contrast with your life experience. Sometimes it will reinforce it. Sometimes the theories you learn will actually organize your life experience and make sense of it even more. But sometimes it's contrastive and that's a meaningful thing. And wrestling with those ideas and seeing how they differ and seeing how they, you know, they don't line up, that's a useful and meaningful part of the learning. It doesn't mean the learning's failing. It just is a context in which you're actually uh, exerting some effort to make sense. Seeking out and using resources. I think, Nav, you're going to touch on this a little bit. Um, the resource piece is massive. Please know, no one expects you to do the work of being a successful student as, in, as a, somebody working alone. Uh, we have many, many, many resources on writing, on libraries, on learning skills, on counseling, on well-being. There's all these resources at your disposal, all of them paid through your tuition, and we want you to make use of those. And we want you to make use of those early on at the early signs of concerns uh, or needs arising so that you can save yourself some energy and heartache. Um, persistence, big factor there. Sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of giving yourself room to say, okay, I'm stuck here. I'm going to go away for a little bit. I'm going to come back at it when I feel fresh again. And just not killing yourself in the process of trying to work through it, banging your head on the wall, but giving yourself room to move to the work and away and back to the work and be persistent with it and trust that you're going to have the opportunity to learn and the, and the capacity to learn. And that brings me to what I think is a super big important thing, and that is adopting the beginner's mindset. As adult learners, we tend to come with a great deal of life confidence. We've We've, we've learned many things in life. And so we expect ourselves to perform at a high level. And the beginner's mindset doesn't say that we're going to perform poorly, but it creates space where as we encounter new tasks, we're observing ourselves and we're saying to ourselves, okay, my mind is flexible. These things are new. I'm going to have to learn a new skill or I'm going to have to come at this learning in a slightly different way. And I'm going to maintain this beginner's mindset. I might make some mistakes. But as I make those mistakes, I'm going to learn how to correct them. And I'm going to make small mistakes, and I'm going to learn from those along the way. And I might even make big mistakes and learn from those. But all of that adds up to experience and makes the road smoother in the future. 
And that applies whether you're looking at academic stuff or, or stuff in the rest of life. You will have to learn some new academic skills, no doubt. Uh, reading skills, some note-taking skills, maybe some time management skills, uh, some writing skills, some researching skills. Um, that's just part of being a new student. And the, the challenge will be that you're going to want to learn them fast because it's evident in your courses that you're going to need to use those skills right away. Uh, keep in mind, too, though, that your instructors understand that you are gradually assembling these new skills. And there are many resources for those. The Learning Skills Services is one such place where you can go to learn those new academic skills. Uh, purpose. This goes back to the question of what's your why. But thinking about where you're going to use this education you're getting at York becomes very important. Keep cultivating that sense of purpose. Why am I doing this learning? Where is this learning taking me? Where do I imagine this uh, leading? That pathway may shift. Uh, for example, when I was an undergrad at York, uh, I was going to be the great Canadian writer. Uh, I was going to write novels and I was going to be, you know, uh, in that area of work. And my, my path ended up changing still very much with language, very much interested in how language worked, but I moved more towards linguistics. And I got really interested in other things to do with literature, but also the language side of things. So my pathway changed and that moved into supporting students with learning disabilities and that turned into a career at York in student services. So your path may shift, but think about what your purpose is because it'll help you to drive forward. It'll help you to look for learning opportunities parallel to your classes uh, in York's college system in, you know, in terms of talking to your peers and your instructors and so on. Uh, keep looking at York's culture. You might find York is a bit of a strange place compared to where you've been before. Uh, it's new, it has its, its quirks, but York is a friendly place despite its size. Uh, people are warm, people are well informed, and we're all here to support you. Um, but take a look and figure out those things you, you've got to figure out about how to operate at York gradually using that beginner's mindset so you can feel like you're at home in this culture. It'll feel different for a little while, but after some time, you'll feel very much connected. And that's the final point here. Please spend some time. There's a little time at the end of our session today for you to build some connections. And uh, that's with each other, with our team. And uh, we encourage you to do that. Um, you know, when you see other mature students on campus, take a pause, take a minute, say hello. Um, Osama is going to talk a little bit about the uh, York University Mature Students Organization. You'll want to make sure that you connect with them. They're a terrific group of people. And they, for years now, have been doing uh, excellent work to provide some social opportunities and, and so on for our mature students at York. So those are among the kinds of connections you're, wanna, you're going to want to make. Um, that's really it for me at this point. That's the kind of starting place. Subsequent sessions of our orientation uh, scheduled for later on in July and into August will give you some more specific things. And uh, I'm going to turn it back at this point to Navani to, to pick it up and talk to our student panel. Thank you, Brian. I'm just going to share my screen. Sorry, I'm just give me one second. So we have our mature students panelists right now. We're going to be speaking to two of our students, like I mentioned to you before. Um, give me one second. So we have Shani Randala, who is a returning student at York University. She's one of our peer mentors as well. She is in coming back to do her second degree at York. She actually started last year. Um, she is in psychology. And we have Sabina who, Garanova, who is our work study student, but Sabina is also a student in the communication she's going into her fourth year. So she's finishing up her degree in communication studies at York University. So what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna, I'm gonna ask them a couple of questions and back and forth questions to see what their experience was at York University. And hopefully their stories will be able to um, give you some more, a bit more confidence in being uh, able to say, yeah, I can do it same way that Sabina and Shani has done it. So I'm actually, Going to begin with uh, Sabina. Sabina, what has brought you to York University? Hi, thanks, Navani. Um, so I, I, um, I started university when I was um, out of high school, and then, um, and then I decided it wasn't for me, and I carried on working. And um, after many years of moving around different countries, uh, building a family, I've got kids now. Um, I wanted 
some kind of recognition for my skills and my interest that I had in the communication studies field just to explore what's out there. So um, I started the communication studies program um, at York University because it just offered the best kind of program from everything I've researched and I've enjoyed it ever since. Thank you. And Shani, what about you? What brought you to York University? Uh, so for me, um, like you mentioned, this is a, a second degree for me and I I went to school, I went to York University for the first time and I did a finance degree and I worked for 20 odd years in finance and decided that I wanted to pursue an area I was passionate about and um, I went from finance and I went all the way over to psychology so it is a form of enrichment for me and self development. Um, I've always been an advocate for mental health and this is a way for me to kind of give back to the community in that sense and you know learn more around counseling and mental health for myself as well. Thank you Shani. And what was your experience as a mature student on campus, Sabina? Um, to be honest, at the beginning, it was nerve wracking. Um, the feeling of being like old on campus and being mistaken for a professor um, definitely made me feel nervous. Um, but as you establish within classes and you build relationships with, uh, with your fellow students and the professors, it becomes easier. and. Uh, definitely engaging with the professors. I think Brian mentioned it earlier, was um, easier and less intimidating for me because I felt I was on a, you know, a similar age, age level. So it was talking like an adult to adult and this gave me more confidence. And um, eventually you feel like, you, you do feel like you're part of the big group. And what about you, Shani? What was your experience as a mature student on campus? So for me, I, I started um, during the pandemic. So there was nervousness around, you know, similar things that Sabina mentioned of, you know, fitting in and, and how you're going to, you know, you're going to be the older person in the class and how to kind of manage that. Um, I guess for me, what added on to it was just being completely online and, and not being in person. Um, but what I can say that I was pleasantly surprised. Um, there's lots of different ways of connecting with students and professors. Um, and as long as you're open to it and you're willing to try that, uh, I found that really helpful. And the second thing I do want to mention is as I was going through the classes, I didn't realize how many mature students are at York. So, you know, it was nice and comforting to know that there are tons of mature students at York and you will come, come across many of them probably throughout your classes. Um, so, so that was a nice uh, surprise, I would say. Um, and similar to what Samina mentioned, as a mature student, you do, you do feel more comfortable approaching your professor and establishing that connection um, as an adult. I, you know, it, it, I found the same, the same thing. Thank you. And as a mature student learner, time management plays an important role at post-secondary, as you both know. How do you deal with juggling various roles and manage your time? Sabina? Um, I think for, for me during the pandemic, it's been even more tricky because um, of the number of courses that were offered remotely. I have a young family and it's been tricky with them doing online learning. So I think in any situation, it's, it's tricky. So I think um, in terms of time management, um, it's really important to look at the courses that you are actually doing and what the requirements are. And even if you're doing ones without a live lecture, for me, this has been the, the trickiest part to master, um, to get a routine of doing courses that are, are not live lectures. So you, you're finding your own time to catch up with the material um, and get through the readings earlier so that you are well prepared in case you do have any questions. Um, so you're basically scheduling time um, for unscheduled courses and keeping on top of those has been really important and doing them in small chunks rather than in one big sitting because otherwise you just your brain overloads and then you stop thinking and you've got all these other things to think about so that's been the trickiest thing but I've appreciated the flexibility um, of these courses at the same time. Thanks Sabina and what about you Shani as a mature student learner 
Um, how do you deal with time management and juggling the various roles? So for me, I think, um, you know, again, pandemics, it's added extra stress. Um, I have two boys at home, homeschooling with them, taking classes yourself. Uh, I found for me what was key was, you know, having time blocked off for particular activities and things that you want to get done. Um, I know it sounds like something you probably already know, uh, but I feel like knowing it and doing it are two very different things. And once you establish that routine of scheduling things that you wouldn't normally schedule, um, you know, like doing chores or spending time with the children, you, you block that time off in your calendar. Um, it just gives you, I guess, more accountability and ownership around the things that you want to prioritize. Um, and then the second thing I would say is that you do want to be flexible with that schedule because you may realize that maybe this is working and maybe this isn't. So you want to be able to, you know, um, change and, and change your time commitment around those things um, as well. And I think lastly for me is you also have to recognize that there's things that you're not going to be able to do. And you have to be okay with letting certain things fall off the plate and that's okay. Um, you know, you just got to choose what those things are that you're, that you're okay with letting it fall, right? Because we can't do it all. <laughs> Thank you, Shani. And Sabina, as a mature student, were you able to get involved on campus, maybe volunteer opportunities, becoming a peer mentor? Um, so I, I, I think as a mature student, it can be a bit of an isolating experience um, because a lot of mature students come on to campus and then they come off campus because they have other things. Um, but in reality, I've, I've made, you know, lots of good friends on the same program just by talking to people that I'm sitting next to um, and who, who are actually not mature students. I also got involved in, as a volunteer uh, for YAMSO, which is the York University Mature Student Organization. And um, through that, I kind of developed in different roles within the executive committee over several years. And um, at the moment, I'm also doing the work study program at ACMAPS, um, which there are many opportunities for work study positions in different departments, depending on your area of interest. Um, and that gives you exposure to both professors, to other students, and um, lets you get involved from that side as well as the social side. Thank you, Sabina. And what about you, Shani? Um, yes, so there are tons of opportunities, I feel, for students uh, to join clubs or volunteer. Um, I feel like there's probably something for every type of personality or interest out there. Uh, for me, you know, I love helping people and it's just part of my MO. So I, I volunteered as a peer mentor with ACMAPS um, for the mature, uh, mature part-time students. So as a peer mentor, if anyone's looking for, um, you know, any type of questions or one-on-one -on -one mentoring, that's a great resource that I find. And I've used it in the past as well. And it's helped me immensely. Thanks, Shani. So we have a couple more questions left. Um, so Sabina, did your mature student experience teach you something that you, you did not know beforehand? Um, I think just to be more confident. So if you make the effort with the professors, they really appreciate your engagement um, and they, you know, they make it clear to you. And uh, also the younger students tend to look up to you and rather than you feeling like you're not fitting in, they will look up to you for answers. And sometimes it can be a bit intimidating. And sometimes they expect you to put in all the weight during group projects. And I think it's really important to set the boundaries and take ownership of the project if it makes you feel comfortable to make sure that everyone is putting in their, putting in their workload. Um, I think you've, you automatically take on the parent role of the group um, so yeah, it's just gaining more confidence on all of those fronts. Thanks, Sabina. And what about you, Shani? Um, so I feel like for me personally, as I kind of embarked on this journey to go back to school later in life, um, you know, I started wondering what the experience is going to be like. Am I going to fit in? Am I doing the right thing? So you have all these 
various doubts that start to creep back into your head. And I feel like one thing I learned is most of that anxiety and nervousness is just self-inflicted. And once you get into it, you realize that, you know, or I realize that I've never felt more engaged and confident being back in school at a later time in life. Um, and I found the more that you're willing to put yourself out there and form those connections, the richer your experience is going to be and the more you'll enjoy it. Thank you, Shani. Uh, so a few more questions. So we're slowly transitioning back to campus for the fall. Some classes are in person, some are online, blended. Um, how do you deal with online classes? Is it something that's doable? And how have your professors helped you? If you could just touch a little bit on that so for those students who are in the session who will be taking mostly online classes. Um, so how did you deal with online classes? Is it doable? And how have your professors helped you? So starting with Sabina. Um, uh, absolutely, they're, they're very doable. It can be intimidating. Um, I think there's a few basics that, you know, just become familiar with in terms of operating Zoom, um, depending on your online class. Um, I found that I still, as if you were in a person in-person class, to still maintain the contact with the professor through Zoom. A lot of the time, um, most students kept their cameras off and I tried to keep my camera on and uh, try to interact with the professor. So, you know, when they're trying to engage you on a reading that you've done for that week, if there is silence, you know, make sure you, you are the one who kind of instigates the conversation to keep it going. Professors really appreciate that. And don't be afraid to, you know, drop in. The professors all have drop-in hours on Zoom. So you can utilize that time just to get a one-to-one -one or ask them more questions, support. Um, and if you ask for support and clarification from the very beginning, they get to know you. Um, and you know, if you have any problems, any issues, uh, it's very, very easily addressed um, because they know you and they're familiar with your situation. And don't be afraid to tell them, you know, I, I'm a mature student. I have family, this and this. And, um, all my professors have been very understanding and I've had a few hiccups here and there. But other than that, you know, they will come through for me. Over to you, Sean, same question. Um, yep, so I actually completely agree with what Sabina mentioned as well. Um, I find once you get over the little hiccups, like, you know, just learning the technical aspects of e-class and the Zoom and all that stuff, which isn't difficult, um, it's actually very doable. And I found the same thing. And I've been telling some of the, the students I've been seeing for mentoring the same thing is keep your camera on. Um, be engaged with your professor and your classmates and you know it's nice for the professors as well because then they don't feel like they're just lecturing to this like space you know outer space and they have faces they can see and they can interact with their students as well um, and you know it's it's just a good way to get to get to know them and build that relationship. Thank you, Shani. Last question from both of you is, what advice would you give incoming mature students? Sabina? Um, I'll say it again, but really don't be afraid to talk to your professors. They, they want to see students, you know, enthusiastic about their programs. And as mature students, I think, you know, we're all here because we're passionate about the subject that we want to study. Um, um, also attend either virtual events or, you know, they might be in person um, by the time you start, but um, attend, you know, there's mindful meditation, there's cafe hours, kind of networking, as well as the le different learning skills for like from the writing center and time management, because, you know, whether you've done a degree before or if you haven't, um, the mindset changes when you're doing um, a, a university course. And I think people feel like, it's a weakness if you're asking for help from for these resources, but actually it really helps you set up um, good practice and good techniques for, you know, take whether it's taking notes or doing lecture notes. Um, and my other advice is um, be kind to yourself because I always have very high expectations for my grades and sometimes, especially now with the pandemic, it's been, you feel like you're kind of stretched in too many places, um, so if you're, you know, getting good grades, uh, it, it, it's still good, but just 
most important is just to look after yourself and your health and then those around you. Thank you, Sabina and Shani. Um, so I would say, I think as mature students, you bring a lot to the table, um, you know, in terms of life experiences and, um, you know, just life in general. And I would say, don't discount that and use them, share them uh, with your classmates, with your professor. I feel that you'll find you can draw on a lot of those life experiences as you go through school, whatever it may be. Um, and you'll, you'll find that you're, a lot of mature students feel like they're starting from scratch and you'll, you'll realize that you're not, you know, because you do have other things that are going to enrich your experience at school. Um, and I would also second what Sabina said about, you know, being mindful of, of yourself and your needs um, and whatever it is that you're juggling in life and, you know, plan your classes accordingly. And I find, I find mature students tend to be high achievers, uh, which is great, but at the same time, you do wanna put yourself first as well and take care of your, your well being. Thank you to both of you, Sabina and Shani. We greatly appreciate the experience and your, you speaking on your experience as mature students. Um, hopefully the students find it helpful. We're gonna move on now. I am aware of the time. It's about uh, 12 o'clock now. So we have a few more minutes to go through a few things. So we'll just power through. Um, sorry, I'm trying to go to the next slide for some reasons. There we go. So we're going to go to the York University Mature Student Organization, OSAMA. OSAMA, if you could please speak on YUMSO and what they do and how the students can get involved, that would be great. Go ahead. Thank you, Navani. Uh, being mindful of the time, I'm going to be try. I'm going to try to be as quick as possible. Uh, so, well, hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, I hope you found the session very useful and not too overwhelming. Uh, I'm the secretary of the York University Mature Students Organization, or YAMSO for short. Um, YAMSO is an all-volunteer student club founded in 2004, and it is the only university-wide uh, club for mature students at the university, including those of you who are parents of young children. And our main goal is to help serve the York University, York's uh, community of mature students, um, both those who are attending in person and those who are studying remotely. Um, we, YAMSO provides an opportunity for, for all of us who have life experiences beyond the lecture hall to mingle with students in similar situations. Uh, working closely with ACMAPS, we uh, aim to connect you with mentors who can support and guide you, whatever the challenges, concerns, and obstacles you may face in your experience as mature university students. Under normal circumstances, our, our home uh, on campus is at Venier College Room 113B uh, at the ground floor. Uh, it's, um, it's a room which I haven't been to because I was appointed to this position very recently and because of COVID, uh, the college, the venue college was closed. But hopefully we're expecting that with things uh, reopening, uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be there again at venue college, room 113. Um, from what I've seen in the pictures, it's a very comfortable space for students to chill, uh, to network with other students, uh, to have lunch or to study. Uh, it's, it's basically a lounge which provides um, complimentary tea, coffee, snacks, and uh, it has desktop computers, a fridge and a microwave. Um, so uh, we, we'll update you when, when this space will be available. Uh, because as far as we know, like, uh, I mean, it wasn't open uh, because of the pandemic but we'll keep you posted as to when it will become available again. In the past, uh, YAMSO has organized pub nights, coffee and conversation meetups, as well as larger events like our open house in September and our holiday party in December, uh, which, uh, which are most of them are like events for the entire family, especially the ho holiday party in December uh, for mature students, their partners and their children. Um, 
this year are uh, as we transition uh, to reopening and lifting of the restrictions. Um, depending on the situation, we will have a mix of different events. We will continue to host the events that YAMSU has in the past, as far as the restrictions and the situations allow us, uh, as well as virtual events such as trivia and game nights, movie nights, cookouts, um, and we're gonna update you all on these events on our um, social media handle and I'll provide the details uh, shortly in the chat. And if the situation allows us, we are also planning to have a barbecue night and dance workshop in fall, which members along with the families will hopefully be able to attend. Um, so our presence during the fall semester at least will be a mix of online and in-person. And as for the winter semester, we have yet to find out uh, what the situation would be, but hopefully things will open up and, and there will be more in-person events. And even if the university opens up fully, we recognize there will be some unique challenges for mature students um, to in-person attendance because some people may, may choose to stay home because of compromised health or childcare issues. Um, and then there are some people who may not be in uh, in Canada or may not be able to attend the campus in person. <clears throat> and despite the uncertainty and the worry, we aim to keep you all connected with one another uh, and with campus life. Through social media, we will be communicating up-to-date information and informing you of events that might be of interest to you from across the campus. We also plan to hold a social get-together each month uh, starting from the fall semester. And uh, the key to our success are YAMSA volunteers. And it is the thanks, it is thanks to the generous donation of our volunteers time that we have been able to keep the lounge um, active like in the past. And um, the role that volunteers play in YAMSO is really uh, significant and there may be positions to join. Um, if you have any expertise or information you would like to share with your fellow mature students, or if you have any questions or suggestions as to what we could do better to support you, please uh, drop us a line, line at, at our email or one of our social media handles. I'll just uh, share the details in the chat now. So uh, there you go, we're on Gmail. You can reach, it, reach us on our email, uh, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I thank you all for being here and I hope that you enjoy your uh, time with ACMAPS and YIMSO. And uh, Navni, I'll hand over the floor to you. Thank you, Osama. Great information. So hopefully some of the students will be able to take or attend some of the sessions that you'll be offering in events that you have for mature students. So we're gonna move on to return to campus COVID-19 updates. We just wanna let you know that this exists. It's, an e uh, it's a website that York University has put together where any information with recent updates to the return to campus, the safe return to campus, you can find all that information there. I'm gonna ask Sabina if you can kindly copy that link and um, post it into the chat for the students. We're also, ACMAPS is also gonna be offering Zoom eClass student tutorial sessions. These sessions will be, hopefully we'll be offering three sessions, the last week of August, uh, first week of September for students who don't know about Zoom and who don't know what eClass is and how to use that platform. We'd be teaching you at, at those sessions. So please look out for those. You can check out our events page for more information as it becomes available. Um, hopefully next few weeks we'll update that. Serena, if you can pop that um, events link into the chat for students so that you can see our calendar would be awesome. Awesome. We are now going to move on quickly to our competition time. I'm going to hand the floor over to Sabina. There is a wheel of names that we call it, or, or um, you get to win one of two York University bookstore gift cards for attending our session today. Um, and then once this is finished, we're going to do the connection activity. Um, we could do less than 10 minutes, um, providing that we have time for students. And if you're willing to stay, that would be awesome. We'll put you into breakout rooms. So Sabina, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we're going to um, hand it over to you. Thank you. This is all new to me. So, um, you know, I tried my best and people coming and going. So I hope I captured everyone. So just one second.
So I hope you can see my screen. Yeah. And so I'm going to spin it two times and apparently it will pick a winner each time. These are from all the people who've attended today. Jeffrey, are you there? Okay. And okay. And we're gonna do it again for the second winner. So, just want to make sure. Yeah, let me just stop sharing because I think my whole thing's just crashed. Oh, King Shi, are you in the session right now? Are you still here? Let me see. If you can let us know in the chat or you can unmute yourself and let us know if you're still here. If not, we'll have to spin again. Not we'll spin again, don't worry. I don't think so. Do it again. Just so it's fair. Yes. So Shengzhu, are you in the session? Yep, there we go. We got our second winner. So if the two winners can kindly um, private message me your email address, that would be great. And what I'll do is I'll send you the gift card number and you'd be able to, once you go to purchase your books in New York University Bookstore, you could use or purchase um, anything that you want from the bookstore, you'd be able to use it online. Okay, so if you could, Sabrina, you stop sharing your screen, right? So I'll go back. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, okay, great. So great, we have some winners. We're going to move on now to our connection activity 10 minute mixer. So here in this, I'm going to put everyone into a breakout room. And hopefully you'd be able to have enough time, five to 10 minutes or so, to mingle and get to know each other. And so the three questions that we're gonna ask that you, you speak on is what did, oh, sorry, why did you return to school now? Um, share with the other people in the room and what is your program? So what program are you in? Why did you return to school now? And what is your passion? And what I'm gonna ask is I'm gonna do it randomly. So we have about 44 people in the session. Um, and then Sabina, myself, Osama, you can also join into any of the breakout rooms and just um, uh, converse with the mature students and get them to um, just talk about their why they're here and what their program is and what their passion is. And if you feel comfortable and you're connecting with someone, please feel free to take their email address and then you can just connect if you have any questions as mature students, you guys can um, connect with each other that way. So just give me a moment. Let me put you into breakout rooms. Sorry, Natalie, there's a question in the chat about getting the handouts. I believe you're sending the Yes, I will be sending a PDF copy of the slides along with um, a bookstore orientation as to how to order your books. And uh, rec the recording will also be sent to you as well in an evaluation form at the end. Okay. Give me one second. Let me do the breakout rooms here. Assign and that. So we have 40.
There we go. So I'm gonna open all the rooms. It's gonna invite you to enter a breakout room. Please do so. How did it go, Shani? You're on mute. You're on mute, I can't hear you. Um, Sorry, so I'm trying to get into a different room. You, it won't allow you to jump and move? No, it's- As a co-host? That's weird, let me see if I can move you. I can't, I can't join, it wouldn't allow me to join because I'm putting it together. So I have to okay. just manage the, where's Shani? Staff not move to, what room were you in just now? I can move you. I was in seven, but maybe room five looks like it doesn't have anybody. So room. I can move you into five? Sure. Okay. All right. So you, Sean and Simeon, do you not wanna go into a breakout room? Are you okay if I move you into one? Just unmute yourself and let me know just a connection activity to meet other mature students. If you're not comfortable, it's totally fine. You don't have to join, just let me know. Zakaria, um, are you comfortable in joining a breakout room just to talk about why you're here, what your program is, what is your passion, or do you prefer not to? Just um, unmute yourself and let me know, it would be great. Leo, do you want to go into a breakout room or no, you prefer not to? Yeah, but I was matched into one that basically didn't have anybody in it. Oh, uh, I didn't see that. Okay, oh, there, room seven. Okay, I'm gonna move you to room six, is that okay? Yep, yeah, thank you very much. No problem. You should get the invite. We're just in breakout rooms right now. Zakaria, are you okay if I put you into a breakout room? You, Sean, Neil, thank you for joining us. We're just doing a connection activity at the moment where we are putting students into breakout rooms so they can meet other mature students and just talk about why they return to school, what their program is and what their passion is. Are you okay if I put you into a breakout room? Just unmute yourself and let me know.
and move people around here. So we see we have a new person, Valeria. We're just doing a connection activity at the moment. So mature students can meet other mature students and talk about why they return to school, what their program is and what their passion is. Are you okay if I move you into a breakout room? If you can unmute yourself and let me know, that would be awesome. Sorry, Techno, thank you for joining us. We're just in breakout rooms at the moment doing a connection activity um, to talk about other mature students meeting other mature students and talking about why they came back to school, what is their program and what is their passion. Are you okay if I move you into a breakout room? If you can unmute yourself and let me know, that would be, a, um, that would be awesome. Couple more minutes.
Okay, one more minute. I'm gonna bring everybody back. Everyone's coming back slowly. So do we think we have everyone back now? We can just go to the last slide and do some closing remarks. Hope you guys all enjoyed that session. Hope there was enough time given. I'm just being mindful that we're over quite a bit. Um, so please forgive us. Uh, so we just wanna say a quick thank you to everyone for attending our session today. Um, hope that the information that was given to you is um, you find it pertinent and that you are able to use the information. Um, this is our ACMAP's website. If you have any um, concerns or questions, you can always go to that website to see what, what services we offer. Our email address is there. You will connect with me if you have any questions. Um, we have our Facebook handle there. If you could connect on Facebook, that's awesome as well. We do put a lot of information out on our social media. There is a group that uh, Sabina has created for the new incoming mature students for fall, winter 2021, 2022, where she's putting pertinent information there with regards to updates that we get every day about uh, returning to campus. Um, about the bookstore, uh, various things you'd find useful. And again, this is my information. You can email me. This is my the phone number that you could connect with me if you have any questions. I am going to stop the recording now, unless Brian, you have the last closing remarks, if you'd like to make any closing remarks, and then we could stop the recording going to questions for students. Um, Nev, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be brief, but I'm just, uh, it might be good just to give people an idea, a reminder of the dates and times uh, of the upcoming sessions. And, uh, and maybe a bit about their topics. Uh, folks, we understand that there's many, many things you're probably coping with as you're starting this summer to, to get ready for the fall. And so we've intentionally broken up the sessions into three separate uh, Zoom orientation times so that you can kind of take a little bit at a time in. So I'm gonna pass it back to Nav for that quick update. Yes, thank you for that reminder. Um, so, Part two is going to be on August the 11th. It's gonna cover campus resources and deadlines. Um, so more in depth about those. And part three will be on August 26th. A keynote speaker from Learning School Services will be Kathy, who is going to be speaking on mature students, sorry, let me see my notes here. Juggling roles as a mature student learner. So that will be beneficial for students in this group as well. Sabina, I know that you've posted the link to our orientation page uh, previously, but if you can post it in the chat again, that would be awesome. So the students can see the details in the description there as well. And again, you can contact me if you have any other um, questions. So what we're gonna do is if um, Sabina or Brian can stop the recording, and I'll stop sharing my screen. We'll go into gallery view and then we'll be able to answer questions that you have there. If you have to go, that's not a problem. Um, we do understand that we went over time a bit. Um, you can always email me your questions.